Welcome to Seriously Speaking. Today, it's all about women who want to lead our country. Because, I mean, I'm proud of them. I'm happy they're doing it. But can they get there? I don't know. What's most important is I get to meet the women with the hearts of the lion. My first guest here today is a woman I've known well for a long time. And, uh, but I've just known her from a distance to the extent that I see all the work she's done in the area of philanthropy. There are two things you can take away from her. She has a beautiful heart and a beautiful face. My first guest is Elishama. Elishama, you're welcome to Seriously Thank you so speaking. very much. I'm so delighted to be here you with you. See where I start. Beautiful heart, beautiful <laughs> face. What scares you most about the decision you've taken? You've taken a decision, I'm going to run for the highest office in the country. There must be something in that that gives you the shivers. <laughs> I've always been one of the greatest gifts I have. I have the gift of fate and I have the gift of boldness. So the only thing that I was really afraid of is um, how is the society or my constituency, how will they take it? But I w I'm not jittery about um, whether I'll be able to go into the ring and you know, we fight this battle. I'll call it a battle. I'm not afraid of that, of that in any way. I'm just concerned about some of my loved ones, my constituency, and the society at large. You know, when it comes to the issue of women, where we, you know, we are still a, a gender-based society, and especially for men, men still dominate our environment. So I'm kind of a little bit, I won't say jittery, but, you know. Well, you say you have a bold heart. But you know, the truth is, you lived 15 years as a widow. Oh, yes. You know, did that teach you any lessons it, at all? It taught Because your daughter married recently, I'm like, look at this happy mother. Yeah. That at last, this girl, <laughs> yeah. you know, I've raised her to the point where she can go to her husband's house uh -huh. proudly. Uh huh. You know? Yes. Uh, staying alone for 15 years has made me so very independent in so, many, in so many ways. I've had to do things all by myself, not just for myself or my children, but for a larger group of people that have been taken care of under my organization. And that has kind of given me this independent zeal that, hey, you know what, girl? You've survived for 15 years. You've taken care of thousands and thousands of people over these years by yourself with so many other people in the organization. Yes, you can go in there and um, just, you know, do be the part of the system. But you're in yeah. ministry, mm -hmm. in, in the faith ministry. Yeah. And you say an experience in life, because I know you as Rosemary. Yeah. That little girl from Isha. <laughs> yes. You know, <laughs> you know I, mean, yeah. I mean, your days in Mayflower. Yes. Maybe, maybe that one planted some kind of zeal in you, because yeah. your trajectory is Mayflower, Genesco. then Federal Government College oh, in yeah. Isha. Then I'm all then the way to the United States. The U.S. to yes. get a master's in master, yeah. mass communication. Mm -hmm. Not no, masters. <laughs> well, your first degree. Yeah, your first degree, yeah. But it was not running for political office that was in your mind all these years. Even not until two years ago. I never imagined it. I never two thought years of ago, it. that long ago? Yeah, I, I never. Is that the spirit was worrying you or something? <laughs> I just had this push in me that we are more than this as a nation. And, you know, that, that zeal also of a mother came upon me that um, we cannot just sit back, you know, and be watching Nigeria go down the drain the way it's going. And uh, we are all just on the sideline screaming, criticizing, complaining. So he's going to go get into the ring to, to, you know, to get things, you know, changed and all that. And, and because I've been dealing with a sort of people that um, I'd, I've had to go into their environment and experience their condition. And this category of people are the majority of what we are experiencing as a nation. The state of the nation now is in a whole lot of poverty state. So those, are the, those were the things that really drove me as an individual and um, as somebody that has dealt with those category of people. You talk about we are more than this mm -hmm. as a nation. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by what is the this that we are more than? I will, I will give you just a little bit of my story. When I went in my social spiritual sphere, you know, in my calling and the work that God called me to do was basically to evangelize. And uh, when I talk about evangelism, I'm not just talking about 
a religious sect of people. I'm supposed to touch every category of lives. And um, the work and the focus I've been given to do and was out there on the streets, you know. Yeah, you, you've met mad women and people Oh, yeah, we've mad taken woman care of too. mad women. We made them stark naked lunatics. We take care of them, both uh, spiritually and medically, and show them love. Uh, we met people out there on the street, giving birth, husband, wife, and giving birth to children that have never known the roof of a house before. And uh, I began to, my organization and I began to take them out from such environments because uh, we just found out that most of the students ended up being drug addicts, uh, uh, prostitutes, hardened criminals. And we were doing this in the little way we can as, uh, you know, uh, an organization. And that began to really bother me. And I looked at the environment and I was comparing it to what we have, the resources, natural and the mineral resources, the blessings we have as a nation. And I was beginning to wonder, hey, we are more than this. Why should people be living at this level of squalor? Don't we have social security schemes in place? Don't we have welfare departments? Why have they allowed children to be birthed right here on the street? Because I know in other nations of the world, let me even just talk about United States or United Kingdom, you will never see a pregnant woman or a woman with a child that will be stranded. Even if you want to become irresponsible, they will come and take those children from you so that you will not mess up their lives. And I found out that this was not the case in our system, and this became a major burden to me. And I also found out that what drove most of these people to the street was abject poverty, extreme poverty. And um, this became a major problem. I began to find out the level of the state of poverty that we are in as a nation. And um, it will interest you to know, Adeswa, if you Google the world poverty clock right now, every five second, every five second, and you know, one Nigerian fall into extreme poverty. Every five minutes, 12 Nigerians fall into extreme poverty. Every one hour, 750 Nigerians fall into extreme poverty. And you think you can solve that problem? Uh, you know why I know that I can solve that problem? Because that is the only reason I'm in this race. Because poverty. Poverty, because if over half of the nation, almost 61% Nigerians are in extreme poverty, and I've been dealing with people in that ratio, in that line, that is what I've been doing in 20 years of the work I've been called to do. I'm like, if the whole half, over half of the nation is in poverty, then, I'm in this for what more than the level I am. Well, in. you do know that leadership is more than poverty. I just wonder. Yeah, I know. Before I, I know. get there, yeah, I get that there. is one of it. That you thought, you asked me what what is driving me. Yeah. Why am I in it? That is the number one reason. Because I just felt if over half of the nation is in extreme poverty, then we are in real serious trouble. And I've been trained in that area to empower, to rehabilitate, to encourage, to build up people in that you know region. Why as president? Why, Why not as senator? Uh, Why not as local government chairman? Okay, let me Why not as councillor? No. Why not as uh, no, I can't. ward chairman? No, because those people don't have experience. They don't have experience. They don't have community experience. Do you know what amazes me about our system in Nigeria? They think it's those people sitting in the office, earning money and just thinking of how to amass wealth into their pocket and looting the system that have experience. In, uh, in the United States, and I will tell you from experience because I have a child that went through that level, it is those that have done community service, public service that qualifies to occupy some relevant you know, seats in the government because they've been there, out there with the people, interacting with them, understanding their condition, understanding their basic needs, understanding what they ought to do for them. But all these people out there, it's not, that so is not what is driving them. So it's your community service them. that qualifies you? Yes, yeah, my community service qualifies me. This whole idea, is it because you believe God is on your side that you can win or you can run? We have to. Or yeah. you are just living out, you are, you are responding because it's not about Winning I'm responding winning. first and foremost because I'm a citizen of Nigeria. I'm first and foremost a Nigerian before I became 
a woman of God or the assignment I was doing. I'm a Nigerian and I want good for this nation. I want to see my nation change. Then most importantly, I went into an area that I began to see the poverty level of our nation. That became another drive for me, that we are more than this. We are better than this.